All right, hello guys. Now, uh, today I'm going to do a quick video, hopefully repairing um, a little problem that I've got with my CDTV. Now, I have my CDTV here in the living room, usually behind uh, these closed doors here. And uh, the reason that I've got it in here is because it's hooked up to my uh, big 50-inch plasma screen in the living room, uh, alongside my other consoles that I've got in here. Uh, the Xbox there as well, PS3, 2, uh, original Xbox down there. Uh, the reason I've got a CDTV in here is because it's probably the only girlfriend-friendly Amiga that I can sneak into the living room. I'm like, oh no dear, it's, uh, you know, it's just a CD player. But there is a problem with it if I want to play disc-based games. Now, I've got the official CDTV drive. Um, the only thing is, it's got a bit of a problem with it. Uh, for some reason, the disc eject sensor on it is playing up and it has been for ages. I've been trying to fix it. Now, there we go, look straight away. No disc present. Then it will act as if the disc's been reinserted. And there, it thinks the disc's been taken out again. Now, it's really strange because I've dismantled this drive so many times and tried to sort it out. And the weird thing is, it actually works fine with all the drive casing removed. And it works better the less screws I seem to have in the drive itself, so at the moment it's kind of hanging on by like just two or three screws in the back of it. But I've been trying to fix that now for God, about six months, so in the end I've got hacked off and I've bought one of these off eBay, um, which is pretty much the same drive, uh, the Amiga, I think it's 1011 drive, if I remember correctly. Well remembered. Um, so what I'm going to do, as the CDTV drives are actually pretty rare, uh, but internally, I'm assuming they're identical drives. So I'm going to take the casing off this, put the internals of this into the black casing, and then I'm hoping that it will solve that problem. So uh, let's give it a go. All right then, so I've removed the uh, CDTV drive, um, disconnected it from the CDTV itself. As I mentioned, it's kind of just hanging on by a couple of screws anyway. And so for some reason, when the casing is tighter, the drive seems to function even less reliably than uh, than when it's you know when it's quite loose, which is a little bit strange, really. I don't know if anyone knows anything about these drives and why that might be. Um, as it would be nice to have two of these working. Uh, as I said, if I kind of disconnect all of this, I've tried running it with um, none of the screws present at all, and it seems to work fine then. It only seems to be when these screws get put into it and it kind of tightens up. I've even tried flexing the case a bit at the top there, you know, in case it was sticking in the driver uh, mechanism in there, but it's really, really strange. So maybe there's someone who's a bit more of an expert on these old Commodore drives than I am. So I'm guessing then all I'll need to do is, um, you can see there, literally like a ribbon cable that's plugged into the connector, as I'd rather keep the black cabling as uh, the new drive, if you look at it. It's got grey cabling, which won't really match the look of the CDTV. So we'll pull it out of here. Um, so you can see, it's not, it doesn't look in bad physical condition. And I know there is inside, if I take this hood unit off here, um, which I probably do actually. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to be gentle with it. There is a uh, disc release mechanism in there. When you put a disc into it, so that catch pushes back, but it seems to go all the way. Um, so I'm not really sure what it could be. It just seems to be when there's some pressure applied to the disc drive, it seems to think the uh, disc has been ejected. So if you know, please do leave a comment and give me a bit of advice because it would be quite cool to have two of these working. I mean, I could rather than sacrificing a perfectly good drive. As uh, looking at this, actually, it looks in amazing condition. I bought this off eBay. Um, it doesn't look like it's been used much at all, if ever, really, there's not a mark on it. So it does kind of feel a shame to be, you know, butchering a perfectly good classic Amiga drive like this. Um, if I can get them both working, that would be amazing. But as I said, I've been messing around with this CDTV drive for so long now, it's getting to the stage where it's um, not really worth the investment in my time spending you know, hours at a time trying to sort it out, then nothing happening. So uh, we'll just move all this aside for now. I appreciate it's not the most exciting video I've ever done, but 
it was kind of my New Year's resolution to try and get a few more videos done this year, so. And I thought you might appreciate it, and I might be able to get a bit of advice off you too. Um, I've had some comments off people asking if I'll be doing any videos on other subjects apart from the Amiga. Uh, well, that, that really depends on you guys. I mean, when I started doing this channel, it was going to be uh, really a general technology one. Would you prefer that I kept it, you know, retro tech? Would you like to see some more uh, gear other than the Amiga? I mean, I've got a lot of Sega products, I've got some Nintendo stuff. Uh, few other Commodores as well. Um, leave me a comment, let me know. I'd be interested to find out. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, I can tell it has been used actually. It's a bit dirty in there. So I don't feel quite as guilty about sacrificing this drive for my uh, CDTV one. Let's have a look in here then. I'm getting all this in on camera. Right, so this should be uh, a case of just releasing the drive itself. from the housing here. I know I get some comments about the uh, sloppiness of my working environment. Yes, I'm doing it on a wooden floor. Um, I haven't got anything laid down. I haven't got an anti-static wrist strap on or anything like that. I'm sure I'll get flamed. Um, but I bet I won't have any problems. I'm not touching any circuit boards or anything. Literally the metal housing, that's all. Get off. I mean, it could be a problem with the cabling on the drive, but as I said, I doubt it. There's always one difficult screw at the end, isn't there? No, nope, that ain't gonna come. There we go, we're good to go. Uh, right, so we'll pull this out of the casing here. Um, disconnect that. Now we'll set all this aside. And yeah, it does look identical really, I mean, from what I'd read, the, they are the same drives. Uh, so then if we just pop this drive mechanism in here, I'm getting this in on camera, uh, reconnect the ribbon cable here. Yeah, perfect fit. Realign this up. These cables out. Now, just before I was putting it back together, luckily I did notice we have a problem. The drive eject button is a completely different color. Obviously the one on the uh, CDTV unit is black. Uh, now looking at the back of it here, I think if we just press it in, as I don't want to put it back in and then we get the wrong color drive eject button on. Let's just try pushing that in there. All right, I think I'm gonna to have to dismantle the whole casing actually for it to push off here, I think. Which is slightly irritating. Right, so I've removed the uh, front of the uh, the drive housing, so now this button here should just pop off. There we go, slide that out. Then the same on the other drive, and then uh, reinsert this somehow. <laughs> How did that go in? Uh, that goes through there, okay. I get it. That goes through there and slides on. There we go, perfect fit. Right, so all the screws are back in the drive. Uh, I've replaced the eject button on the front. Uh, so hopefully when we uh, reassemble all this, everything will clip into place nicely. And we won't be able to tell that the, uh, the drive mechanism's been changed. There we go. Let's check that the, uh, the disc can insert before I tighten up the casing. Looks fine. Okay, now we'll uh, quickly pop the screws back in and then we'll give it a try. I haven't tried it out yet, so I thought we'd wait until it was all uh, completely back together and do it on camera. And there we have it, feeling nice and solid now. Uh, so we'll reattach it to the CDTV and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so the drive's reassembled, the CDTV is powered up and if we listen, the drive is ticking, which means it, um, it's probably working, so do a quick reboot of the CDTV. Uh, and we'll pop a disc in and let's pray that it works. Oh, looking good.
result it worked fine okay so uh, there we go my CDTV now has a proper working disk drive again which means I can get back to playing a bit of lemmings and stuff in the living room now which is always nice so uh, as I said before if anyone's got any tips on uh, how I can maybe get that other drive that's having problems with the disk ejector mechanism working again please do give me a shout